Welcome back for the third video in our three-part series where I show you how to take GarageBand drums from this to this. Crazy, right? Small, tiny, digital, lifeless, huge, real, natural sounding. In the first video, I showed you how to add space around your drums. In the second video, I showed you how to add some punch to your drums, make them sound way punchier. And in this third and final video, I'm gonna show you how to add color so your drums don't sound so perfect and digital, they sound more organic and real. This is the Band Guide, I'm your Band Guide, Colin. Let's make it happen. All right, today we're gonna to be adding color to these drums to make them sound even more real and less digital. Before we do that, I wanna remind you one more time, be sure to download my guide below in the description. This guide is gonna walk you through everything you need to make your GarageBand drums sound real. It has everything from this video series and it even has a couple more tips to really take full control over them so that you can mix them into your song so they sound real. All right, so today we're adding color. When we think of color, we think of analog gear and vintage gear and vintage compressors and vintage microphones. All of those things are adding harmonic content. And they, they're great, they can sound really great. Sometimes they don't sound great on a source and that's part of color. That's one reason that it's an advantage sometimes to have a really clean recording because you can add color in other ways. So especially when you're starting out, starting with really clean recordings is a great way to know that you're not maybe getting the wrong color on this source. Adding color can also make things sound more real because a uh, perfectly clean recording, a perfectly clean drum track isn't necessarily real sounding. The world isn't perfect. The world isn't perfectly clean. No, a drum tone isn't perfectly clean. And so doing things to add more color to these drums will make them sound more real. Now, as I said, we typically think of tape machines and analog gear, but you can also add color with distortion. Distortion is free, it's easy, and it's built into GarageBand already. It adds harmonic content, and you can blend it in, same way that we did the parallel processing with reverb, parallel compression. This is gonna be parallel distortion. So, lesser known, but great tip to make your drums sound more real and organic. So we're gonna start by actually duplicating the parallel compression track this time. Command D to do that. Option click and drag this MIDI track down. And let's go ahead and uh, we'll turn this volume up. Let's listen to what we have here. So that's, as we talked about, the compressor is already distorting it a little bit. We're actually not gonna rely on the compression from the distortion, the distortion from the compression in this video. So we're gonna turn this threshold up. We're gonna turn the gain down a little bit. I just want the compressor to kind of even it out a little bit before we distort it. So let's listen here. down a little bit. I'm just trying to balance that. Remember the tip from last time, try to balance the volume so that you're hearing just the compression itself. So let's listen here. We're gonna take this threshold up a little bit more to reduce how much gain reduction we're getting. And then let's compare one more time. Okay, so that just gives it a little more body, a little more presence. And now we're gonna distort that. And we're gonna distort it a lot. So very easy, just the distortion track in GarageBand. Let's just listen to what this sounds like right away. Okay, so obviously it's very loud. Uh, it's because we're adding six decibels of distortion. So we'll go ahead and turn this output down a little bit. It's a little bit more muffled. So we're gonna turn the tone up a little bit. So it's not, so we're getting distortion across higher frequencies as well, because we do want some high frequency distortion in there um, along the EQ curve. Somewhere around there sounds good to me. But then I want even more distortion. I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna keep turning this up. Let's see what we get. Ooh. That's crazy, right? There's so much distortion on that, but I guarantee you when we mix this in in just a minute, it's gonna sound awesome. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do is, if you notice, for some reason, the low end is really kind of uh, wide. The low end on the kick, 
And that's not necessarily a problem, but sometimes it, it, it can get in the way of things that are panned left and right. So we're gonna go in the imaging plugin here and we're gonna actually reduce the spread. So right now it's full pan left and right. Uh, we're gonna make it narrower so it's closer to just the middle. Listen to how this changes that. I'm also going to turn this kick down just a little bit. So, so before I did that, so just makes it a little bit narrower, won't get in the way of other things quite as much. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and mix this into the track and see what we think. That's pretty crazy, right? Okay, so let, let me show you one more time really quick. This is without, and this is with. It's crazy, it adds punch, it adds color. It makes the drums just sound less digital because they're just not perfect anymore. They're now, they have some distortion in them and it's a parallel process, right? So we're mixing this into a completely unaffected drum sound. We still have our main track up here that doesn't have any effects on it. Well, minimal effects, it's just processed to sound nice. And then we added rooms to make it sound kind of distant. And then we added snare reverb to make the snare really pop out a little bit differently. And then we added parallel compression to make it punchy. And we added, uh, and I'll go ahead and retitle this right now, crunch to make it nice and crunchy. And this crunch track is giving it the distortion, it's making it sound even less perfect so that it sounds more real. It's amazing what it can do. If this video was helpful for you, please like it. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be back every week giving you tips, tricks, recording, GarageBand, some other DAWs. So even if you work in other DAWs, these same principles apply and you can use them in other ways. If you're working in GarageBand, this is nice and easy and tailor fit for you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below about music production, about GarageBand, about Logic, about Pro Tools, whatever you're using, let me know. I might be able to help you out either in the comments or in a future video. And last but not least, go download that free guide. Make your GarageBand drums sound real. I wanna give this to you so you can make your GarageBand drums sound real and not keep chasing or feeling like, oh, I gotta change DAWs to get a better mix or oh, I gotta learn how to record all organic natural drums, that's a big undertaking. You can get great music and great results out of GarageBand. I'm gonna show you how. So like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in a video soon.